Friday, the spin is back. Um, I apologize, last week I did not do the video. Uh, I think I mentioned, and I'll mention the other part as well, that uh, I was in the studio recording a big show for next week. Lots of star power, man, it's going to be cool. You got to tune in for this one, tune in for this one. Anyway, um, as I, and I'm really having just double timing with the Uber crap, please support the channel because I hate this. I want to get, I need to do my car repairs, so I'm fighting to get my car repairs back. So I have less time at the moment, but I should have my car back next week. Of course, you can help with that. Buy a hoodie. You'll find out more about that on the 24th. Um, so when I'm, you know, in my downtime, which I get very little of right now, I watch drum videos. And something came across my TV, I guess, my smart TV. And not all the things on YouTube that you watch, I'm sure for other instruments as well, but for drummers, are good. Some of them are great. And I'll link to them. Mike Johnson, he's fantastic. I learn a lot from his channel. Um, Stephen Clark, for beginners, intermediate, he's fantastic. He's great. Really uh, knows that drop and catch thing and really explains that very well. Stephen Taylor, now here's the thing. Stephen Taylor, personally, I think he's one of those guys that, uh, you know, poops and thinks, hey, that don't smell that bad. I'll tell you the truth. A little, he's a little much, you know, with <laughs> a little self-absorbed, but he's a good player and he has a good channel. He teaches good things and I've learned from his channel. But there are some others. The ones I've mentioned so far, Mike Johnson, Stephen Clark, Stephen Taylor, I'm sure there were more that I'm not mentioning. They gig. They gig. They perform. There are others that don't. I play probably from March through October 100 and 150 gigs. When I did cruise ships, I did it for 10 years. So something came across, and I'm going to name sort of names. Mr. 6040. He's wrong a lot. He is a YouTube guy. The, the, the one or two clips you see of him actually playing with people, you see a bass player getting pissed at him, getting mad at him. Okay. Have I learned from him? Yes. Yes, I have. I have learned from him. But, to put it concisely, he teaches a lot of stuff for people that play in their basements and never leave their basement. He teaches a lot of stuff like that. Polyrhythms, 19 over 25, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's fun, it's cool, you know, it's wacko, but it ain't going to help you on the gig, man. No way, no how. So. He was teaching something about feathering the bass drum and then about doing the accents with it. And he was going to do, trying to get people to pay for a three week course on feathering the bass drum. Don't do it! Okay, I got to take a clinic with uh, Ron Carter, the bass player for Miles Davis. And, I, and somebody asked the question about drummers. Uh, playing the bass drum on all four with the, with the uh, bass player. And he said outright, he said drummers used to do that when they recorded with three mics in the room. And it was to give the upright player, because he usually wasn't amplified, a little more power. But now we have amplification. Look. I got, to, I got to do a tour on cruise ships with Bruce Wallace, great bass player. He also was Jimmy Cobb's bass player. If you don't know Jimmy Cobb, look him up. I'll post his picture or something over here. And Jimmy Cobb was Miles Davis's drum. And we talked about this. He did not like it when drummers played all four because he had an amp on his upright. And I had a mic on my bass drum. He didn't like it. You know, I studied with Joe Cassatz, who was a contemporary of uh, Freddie Gruber, 
who Neil Peart and everything, everyone studied with him, he said, he said, look, now, now, you know, do the dropping the bomb, we call it, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Not this boom, 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 boom. Now, if you're, if you're doing a period gig, you know, that's like that sing, sing, sing type stuff, yeah, sure. Four on the floor, that's fine. That's fine. When I'm doing shuffles, I do four on the floor generally. You know, that's different for blues things. But that's amplified. And, but, you know, the thing is that on this channel, Mike Johnson's channel, Stephen Clark's channel, Stephen Taylor's channel, and more, we're going to get you ready to gig. To, do, to learn things that you need to learn to get ready for the gig. I guess you can spend three weeks to learn about feathering the bass drum. And you might have one gig in the next two years where you really have to do it. Most of the time they're going to want you to use that bass drum in a conversation with your snare and with your other limbs, right? In a conversation in jazz. The bass drum is part of the conversation, right? It became that. It became that. Did it used to do boom, 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 boom? Yes. Yes. And to be honest with you, how many, like, they're just, you know, even when I do, I do it, I did for uh, 2020, I did every Tuesday night, I did a jazz trio gig. I, I almost never feathered the bass drum. I had an upright player with an electric upright. There was no need. In swing, the bass player drives the time. Anyway, enough of that. Look, Mr. 6040, if you want to come on my channel on Musicians on Couches, and we can talk about this. We can also talk about your metronome stuff. You know, the, the metronome being on the E and the Da. Jeff Berlin, one of the great bass players of our time, one of the greatest in the world, says, you can read it on his Facebook page, it's only going to help you hear the metronome in a weird place. It's not going to help your time. All right, right? I have ways. You want to study with me, folks. I have ways to help your time. Really good ways. Try, uh, uh, tried and proven ways to help your time. Not putting the metronome on E and da and the fourth triplet of the ninth beat, all that stuff, right? It's just not the way. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about vocabulary of swing using the Ted Reed syncopation book. There are other books like this. And I, I mentioned this in the, I already did the, uh, drumming part, the, the lesson part. I mentioned this in, that, in the lesson part, but there are other books. Uh, uh, John Riley has a book, but the syncopation book is so versatile and it's been around for so many years and it, it, it shows those figures the way you would have them in a real chart. In a real chart. For guys that gig. You know, if you're playing in your basement, rock and roll hero, that's a different thing. But if you're really gigging, you know, the, the single patient book does it that way. And even though it wasn't written for these things, um, man, I, that, the single patient book is like $11 or $9 or something, and you can use it for everything. It's just a great, great book. It's one of the drummer Bibles. So let's go right to the drum lab right now, and let's talk about using the Ted Reed book to learn a vocabulary to use under swing to begin your conversation. We already did one, one lesson about a month ago, the same thing. I'm going to link to that in the description. But yes, I, I do learn from the 6040 guy. But I think you got to be careful with him. I think you got to be careful. I think better to learn from the guys who are out there dig in the trenches. I'm not talking about learning just from Steve Gadd. I'm learning, I'm talking about learning from the guys who are playing gigs regularly. 50, 100, 200 gigs a year with different people. Like Mike Johnson. Uh, Stephen Clark plays with his church every week and then he gigs, he talks about the gigs he does, right? These are the guys you want to listen to. Not learning how to play 19 over 27. And, and not that there's not value in that, but spending two months working out that idea that you're never going to use. 
it just seems like a waste. Anyway, stay with this channel. I'm gonna, right now, let's go to the drum lab and let me show you how to increase your vocabulary in swing using the syncopation book. The best $9 investment you can make. It might be 11. All right, to the lab now. last week um, I was in the, in the studio recording next week's uh, video which is going to be spectacular it's musicians on couches back we're gonna do some stuff live in the studio I got a great band playing for you oh man I can't wait to edit that out and get it up I should have it up for the 24th okay I'm, 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 I'm hoping I'm hoping I'm hoping I'm hoping I should have it up on February 24th so look for that look for that but let's continue. Uh, I haven't actually done the monologue yet, but I know what I'm, I'm going to be talking about, right? We're talking about uh, that, that feathering thing, which is just not useful. If you want to get better at your swing vocabulary, working on that feathering thing, which would be this. not that useful today not useful today I, I'm sorry but it's not but the syncopation book why do I think this book is better than many of the other options out there all right and that's the Ted Reed uh, oh, we're losing stuff all over the place here I don't care uh, the Ted Reed syncopation book right I got a couple of copies here this is like my 15th copy and it's all chewed up already why do I think it's better Okay, why do I think it's better? One, it's cheaper than some of the other things. And I'm sure the John Riley book is really good, which, you know, Mr. 6040 likes to talk about. And John Riley, I'm hitting the ball. John, John Riley is a good player. And the clinics I've seen of him, he's a good teacher. I don't know what happened to 6040. I don't know what happened. All right? I, I wouldn't base John Riley on that guy. Because, like I said, you want to talk to the dudes, or like I will say, when I actually do the monologue, isn't it kind of weird? You know, I'm kind of like making sure I put that in now. Anyway, you want to listen to watch the, the YouTube videos of guys who are actually out there gigging. Actually out there gigging. You don't want to watch the guys who are in their basement all day working on this stuff that, oh, it might be cool or cute, the stuff they're doing, but it's not real. Not real. And I don't mean that it's fake. You, the polyrhythm is not pretty cool, but, you know, a lot of that's just not useful on the gig. Anyway, so, again, this book is cheaper than a lot of those other books. Uh, John Riley, Gary Chafee, all that kind of stuff. It is cheaper. It's been around for years. Uh, but moreover than that, the figures in this are written just like you would see them if you were reading a big band chart or reading on a cruise ship or reading in a play or something like that. The figures are written just like that. In, in the Riley book and some of the other books, you have you know, all the parts, what your left hand and your right hand is doing all written out for you. And, and this, this relies on a little bit more of your imagination, true, but it's actually how it would be if you were reading a big band chart, they wouldn't write everything out for you. They would put the figures they want you to hit. And, I, and I've said this before, if you don't know how to do that, get with me. Four lessons. Four lessons. Cost you $200. 50 bucks a lesson. Lessons run about an hour. We'll get you up to speed. You'll learn what it means when the, when the figures are written above the staff, when they're written on the staff. Uh, how to approach them, right? All that kind of stuff. What are, what are they meaning by it? Okay, so... Just like the first one we did uh, with the Ted Reed book, that page 34, we're going to do that top line again. I got it posted here somewhere, right? It's, it's if I play it straight, it's one and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. But if you were reading a chart, a big band chart, or on a cruise ship, it would just, it would have that figure written just like it, you see it here, but it would say swing on top. And we would go one. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? 
So now we're going to put it under the swing thing in a minute. So to increase your vocabulary, a better thing to practice, to increase your vocabulary that you will actually use, that you can use on the gig this weekend. And like I said before, like I will say before, I just think that's funny. Uh, Try here. Stop. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? Now. You're looking at now, sir. Everything that happens now is happening now. What happened to then? We passed then. When? Just now. We're at now now. Go back to then. When? Now. Now? Now. I can't. Why? We missed it. When? Just now. Um, you do four on the floor, and you're not 100% in sync with the bass player, he's going to be pissed, or she's going to be pissed. They're going to be pissed. They're going to feel irritated by you. All right, you're doing this. They're going to feel irritated by that. You know, they, they don't want that. They want to drive that time. When you're doing swing, the bass player drives the time. Uh, the, the drummer plays right behind the bass player. That's the way it should go. The bass player should be just ahead of the drummer. So, so when I look at this, when I see an eighth note, because it's a short sound, I'm going to play that on my snare. When I see a uh, chord note, I'm going to play on my bass drum. So this becomes now I'm going to put that under spang the lang lang, right? And again, this has 12 different figures, four bars a piece. Right, that's 48 bars of uh, 12 different figures that you will actually see all the time in charts. I mean, it's got pages and pages of them, man. But you will, like I said in the other video, you will learn more by working with this book than any of those other books. And you know, we can do this 10 different ways. With the way that I did it by using it as color under the halftime shuffle last time, uh, and you putting those triplets in the middle, right? We did that in the last one. This is now actually playing figures. So watch, here we go. Here's that first one, right? Remember, the figure is this. So I'm going to put it underneath this, nice and slow. One, two, three, four, two, three, four. Catching on that? You catching on that? Let's put a little more mustard behind it. behind it. Right. So there you go, that's just the first four bars. Let's take another one, let's take another one. Let's take, uh, uh, oh, I like, I like number five a lot. I like number five. Let's take number five. So I'm going to post that up here somewhere too. So number five would be, if I did it straight, one, two, and Okay, swinging it. Now, mixing it up with the snare and the bass drum. Again, the eighth notes are going to be my snare. The quarter notes are going to be my bass drum. So it's one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Now, nice and slow. Let's put it under this. One, Two, three, four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Ah. It's hard if that's B. 
Steve, it's hard. It's harder than it looks. It's harder than it looks, right? I probably wouldn't do that if I was uh, doing something at that speed. Let's look at another one of my favorites. Let's look at number six, another one of my favorites on this, right? So this, if I get it straight, one and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. Here we go. Again, tons of vocabulary. All right, I'm going to close it out with this. I'm going to close it out with page, oh my God, oh my God. I'm going to close it out with page 38, 38, and that's where every bar is different. And so you have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 40 bars. Every bar is different. It's like a little solo. I'm going to close it out with that. I'm going to do it off Audacity. Stay tuned for the 24th. You're going to love it. And watch out for the YouTubers that don't gig. Support this channel so I can get my car back next week. All right. All right. We're set up and we are ready to go. We get the metronome clicking at 163, but only on two and four. That will do much more for you than to have the metronome beating on the E and Dove beat 19 or something like that. That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. That's for guys who play in their basement and never actually gig. That's what that's for. That's Jeff Berlin says that. I think Victor Wooten has said that. Many other drummers and bass players have said that. It just teaches you to hear the metronome in a weird place. It doesn't help you. Okay, so again, we want to watch out watching these YouTube guys that don't really gig. Okay, here we go. More than feathering, more than spending weeks learning how to feather and do accents, this is gonna be better for you. The Ted Reed book, page 38, top to bottom. It is 40 bars, every bar is different. I'm gonna play it like a solo. The eighth notes are gonna be snare. The bass drum is gonna be quarter note. We're, we're clicking at 163. We're gonna be swinging our way down. Here we go, let's get some time going. So let's get some time going. A one, two, three, four. Make you feel good. You know, start the page when it feels like it's swinging good. Try not to overthink it. Here we go. A one, two. I haven't done this in about 10 years like that, top down. I will see you on the next one. Remember, on the 24th, a big premiere. Don't miss it. See you on the next one. <laughs>